everybody. Today we're going to make some marinara sauce and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's so easy. It's the easiest thing in the world and there's no need to buy a canned marinara sauce, jarred marinara sauce anymore because this is just so easy. So um, first of all, we've been working on mise en place in class and getting everything organized, everything in its place. So mise en place is a culinary term that means to put in place. So in this jar right here, this can, I've got um, crushed tomatoes and it is the large 28 ounce can. You can make your own and that would be perfectly fine, especially if you have homegrown tomatoes, fresh summer tomatoes, and you can make your own crushed tomatoes. That would be probably even better, but tomatoes right now are not in season. So the best thing to do is just buy a can of crushed tomatoes. We also have about six cloves of garlic minced. Now, this might be a little bit on the healthy side, but to me, I love garlic and I just always add just a little bit more. We have some of our seasoning here. I've got about a, a teaspoon and a half of salt and about an uh, eighth of a teaspoon or a pinch of red, crushed red pepper. You can do cayenne pepper as well. Um, I've also got some, about a fourth of a teaspoon of oregano and a fourth of a teaspoon of um, just black pepper as well. And I've got some fresh herbs here. Uh, the reason that I'm going with fresh herbs is because I want my students to learn how to chiffonade. So this is basil. We're gonna learn how to chiffonade this. Um, well, my culinary two students should know how to chiffonade, but in case you need a reminder, we're just going to take these leaves and stack them up on top of each other. And then we're going to roll it up like that, okay? So just rolling it to where it looks like this. And then we're gonna take our knife and we're gonna take that roll, put it seam down and in small strokes, we are going to slice through this basil in a chiffonade. So when it gets done, you're gonna have these curly pieces like this, and that's going to, first of all, be a lot more efficient to cutting these leaves, and also it looks beautiful. So if you wanted to, you could also save some of this for garnish, um, but we're just going to add all this in with our seasonings. All right, we've also got a onion here. Now I have not done my mise en place on the onion because I wanted to remind everyone how to cut an onion in case we for forgot since last year because it's been a while since we've been in the kitchen due to our coronation. So I'm just going to cut the end off of this onion right here. And then over on the back side, I'm just gonna cut just a teeny tiny bit of this hairy end off as well, just so that the hairy bits don't um, get in my onion. All right, then I'm going to put this down on where it's not rolling around because I've already cut that end off. Then it should stay in place. And I'm gonna cut halfway through, I'm gonna cut all the way through, but in half, I cut the onion in half, just like that. But I've left the root part on. You've got to do that. Leave this root part on. All right, put half of my onion away. I will not need that part. And I'm gonna peel my onion. Get the peeling off here. Take a little bit. Sometimes I even like to take the first layer off if it doesn't look too good. All right. Okay. Now, I want you to remember how to cut this onion in slices, but not all the way through the root. You wanna cut all the way down to the cutting board, 
but not through the root. We're gonna leave this end intact. All right, so I'm going to make sure that you're using safety, bear claw, and you're just going to put that end of the knife, the tip of the knife, where you want it to stop, right there, and slice down. Right there, and slice down. And keep going. All right, then I'm gonna turn it the other direction. I'm gonna put my hand flat right here, and I'm just gonna make an incision this way. And then I'm going to take my onion and I'm going to slice down in this direction. So now you see we've got little small pieces. So we've got a small dice rather than really large bits of onion. We don't want large bits of onion in our marinara sauce. Now, this recipe um, calls for about a quarter of a cup of onion, about four tablespoons. You, if you like onion, you can always add more if you want to. And then when we get down closer to the root, then I'm just gonna take and just kind of slice this onion like this so we're not wasting any of that bottom part of the onion. All right, so now we've got our onion cut up. If you see any large bits here that didn't get quite cut through, just go back and just do a rough chop. If I were cutting something like this for a salad, I would want to make sure that all of my pieces looked even so that it was nice and beautiful, but these are pretty much even sizes right here. All right. Now, I am going to heat my stove up over here to on medium high heat. And I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of oil in the bottom. I don't want this too oily because eventually the oil will separate out from the tomatoes and we're going to end up with a big oily mess on top and we do not want that. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do once this heats up is I'm going to saute the onions in with the garlic. But I wanna put the onions in first because they're gonna take longer. This garlic is already um, really small and you don't want burnt garlic because that would not make for a good taste in your marinara sauce. So we're gonna put the, uh, the onion in here first that's heated. All right, that's feeling pretty good. About four tablespoons or so. All right, and hear that sizzle so I know that my pan was nice and heated. I like onions, so we're going to put just a little bit more. Of All right, just kind of stir that around. a lot of color on this. I just want it to be cooked a little bit more and not raw. So my onion's been cooking for about a minute or so. Now I'm going to put my garlic in with it and stir that around. My son's making a frappuccino in the background, so that's what that noise is. All right, just give this a stir. Again, we do not want burnt garlic and it will cook fast. So I'm just gonna stir this around just to get it heated up. And then we're going to add the crushed tomatoes. our seasonings. All right, once that is all simmering, then you wanna turn this down to about medium low uh, because you just want it to simmer. You don't want it to continue to boil. And we're going to cook this on medium low heat for about 15 minutes. So we've got just a few more minutes 
left for the 15 minutes simmering with this sauce. And the reason you want this to simmer for 15 minutes is first of all, um, you want it to do what I call merry with the seasonings so that um, all of that nice herbs and um, salt and pepper mixture that we put together to season this is going to be really uh, fragrant and flavorful throughout. Um, and it's just going to taste not like tomatoes with seasoning, but that it's all one cohesive sauce. Um, and the other thing is so that it can reduce, which means that some of the moisture has been evaporated out um, and has reduced to thicken the sauce. And it has done that really nicely. Um, I think that it looks really nice and beautiful. It's only got a few minutes left. So I just want to talk to my students right now, um, especially my culinary two students that are watching this video so you can make this in class. So we've been talking um, or learning about the five mother sauces and you know that one of those is tomato sauce. So the mother sauces, just to review, um, is the they're the basic sauces from which all other sauces are made and the tomato sauce is one of those and you can make your own tomato sauce by getting um, fresh tomatoes and you can peel them and core them and seed them and um, and then boil them down and mash them or put them in a blender and make your own tomato sauce Marinara is kind of a version of that because we've taken already crushed tomatoes. It wasn't really tomato sauce, but we've added some seasonings and everything to make a marinara sauce. You could also take this particular sauce and change it up to make other sauces like a rosé. You could add some heavy cream or even some um, cream cheese chunks in there and let it melt and get nice and creamy. That would be delicious over some pasta. Um, you could put some extra herbs in there. Uh, you've got, if you've got rosemary or thyme or any of those kinds of herbs, you can add some extras in there, some parsley, um, and that would be a very, very nice traditional Italian herbs to put in. Um, you could uh, put less garlic, more garlic. Um, you could even um, put, um, if you're old enough, you can put uh, wine in there and cook it down. And of course the wine is going to, um, the alcohol will eventually cook out of that. Um, and to make like a burgundy wine sauce. Um, but we don't do that in class. Of course we can't um, bring alcohol into the building and I do not advise that you do that until you're much older because you can't even buy it at the store. So um, anyway, this is has been cooking for about 15 minutes and it looks gorgeous and I cannot wait to eat this. Uh, you can put this over pizza, straight over pasta, mix in some meatballs and put them on a sub sandwich. Whatever you want to do, it's a very versatile marinara sauce that is good on pretty much anything. Um, dip some cheese sticks in there whatever you want. Um, for my family, um, some of my students reminded me that last year um, in Advanced Foods and Nutrition, we made zucchini boats, and that's what I'm gonna end up making with this sauce right here. And if you've got leftover, it freezes really well so that you can pull it out and put it over, um, thaw it, um, heat it up and put it over some pasta for a quick dinner as well. You can make um, large, a huge batch of it and freeze it and bring it out for uh, quick, easy meals throughout the week. All right. Thanks for watching.